third book on this year's shortlist dissects one of the largest industries in modern society, the government. It pulls back the curtain and it attempts to provide a deeper understanding of the contribution that unelected officials make to the success of democratic political systems. This is The Machinery of Government, Public Administration and the Liberal State, written by Joseph Heath and published by Oxford University Press. The book deals with the question of how civil servants should think about the public good and how it should inform their work. My major reason for writing the book is that while the issue is incredibly important to the quality of government, it is surprisingly neglected. There are literally thousands of books on business ethics, but practically nothing written on ethics for civil servants. I'd also seen some appetite for such a work within the civil service, particularly when it comes to reconciling the commitment to promoting the public good, which is widely shared amongst officials, with the traditional constraint of political neutrality. The old public service slogan, fearless advice, loyal implementation, does not really capture a lot of what goes on. And so I wanted to provide an alternative way of thinking about these issues. And that's why I wrote The Machinery of Government. Hi, my name is Hugh. I'm a student at the Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy. And I have a question for Joseph Heath, the author of The Machinery of Government. So in the book, you document how the state has grown in scope over the past century. And as the state becomes you know, larger and more complex, the actions of the civil service become more and more consequential because they are granted a, a considerable amount of discretion in, in fulfilling their roles. And that might be a good thing from a governance point of view, given you know, the expertise of the, of the public service. But do you think that it starts to undermine our sense of citizens that we are in control of our own future as we start to to see democratic politics shrink into just uh, TV friendly talking points about about a tiny subset of the of the overall issues of the day. So do you see this a, a trade off where as we grant more power to the public service for the sake of good governance, we also start to become less interested in participating in democracy? Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for the question, Hugh. So I don't want to suggest that the growth of the administrative state has been the major factor driving the decline of democracy or the growing sense you mentioned that the decisions have been taken out of the hands of citizens and their representatives. There's a sense in which power, uh, you know, like nature, abhors a vacuum. People have certain expectations about the role of government in society and in particular the problems that they expect the state to solve. If one branch of government is failing to act in the face of these problems, power will tend to shift to other branches of government so that they acquire the capacity to act. You can see this really clearly in the United States with the shift of power from the legislature to the judiciary um, and the, the courts, right? But it happens as well with the executive. So right now in democratic politics, there's a very sort of negative dynamic going on of competition that's consuming more and more time, the time and energy of politicians. And that's in turn reduced their interest in governing, or at least it's made their style of governance much more hands-off. So in many cases, the, what they've actually done is hand power over to elected officials directly. Um, but in other cases, it's civil servants who have basically stepped up to the plate, simply because there are certain jobs that nobody else seems interested in doing. Um, and so I think that the, the so-called decline of democracy is definitely something which is happening um, you know, in the political system. It's not something which is a consequence of the, of the administrative state. Thank you very much. Uh, so it's, it's an honor to be here. Uh, obviously, thank you very much to the to the jury, to the Donner Foundation, especially to the jury for having sort of plowed through what was a, at sometimes a rather difficult book. Um, I should mention, so a lot of the book was written actually as material for a course that I teach uh, in the Masters of Public Policy program at the University of Toronto. Uh, and so I, first of all, I should thank Mark Stabile, who was the founding director of the public policy program. First of all, for having gone out and found me and invited me to teach a course on this topic, which is what actually sparked my interest in it. Uh, and then subsequently making it part of the core curriculum. So I've been teaching it for over a decade now. And, um, and definitely the, the greatest thanks has to go to the generations of students uh, doing some quick math and realizing that there's literally hundreds of them who have read, commented parts of the book and participated in classroom discussions and also tolerated sort of long lectures from me on these topics. Uh, so that by far has been the most significant source of, of input and inspiration for me. Uh, teaching public policy students definitely, of all the different parts of my job, uh, that teaching definitely feels like the, the most useful uh, part of my job. 
Um, I'd also like to thank Peter Olin and Madeline Freeman at Oxford University Press in New York uh, for having shepherded the project uh, through to completion. And finally, I know it's uh, somewhat unusual to, to, to thank subcontractors, but I wanna actually thank the staff at NewGen in India who produced the book uh, and unexpectedly got locked down halfway through production. And uh, you can see a little bit in the text some of the duress under which it was produced. Uh, but the mere fact that they managed to get the book out uh, under lockdown uh, and in the middle of the pandemic is, is something of a miracle. So I wanted to uh, extend particular appreciation to them. Thank you.